Hello everyone. Welcome to BLK Pediatric Practice. I am Dr. Swati Kanodia. I'm a consultant in pediatric and adolescent endocrinology and diabetes at BL Kapoor Super Speciality Hospital. Today we would be talking about precocious puberty in children. We all know the onset of puberty is appearance of breast bud in girls and increase in testicular volume in boys. Now puberty is happens because of the activation of the HPG axis, that is hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. LH and SSH are secreted from the pituitary, which acts on the gonads and leads to formation of estrogen and testosterone hormones, which bring about pubertal changes in the body. Adrenal androgens also have a role as they are responsible for acne, body odor, and pubic and axillary hair. And the normal age of onset of puberty in girls is 8 to 13 years and in boys, it's 9 to 14 years. Now, what is precocious puberty? According to definition, it is the pubertal status less than plus two standard deviations for ethnicity. What does it mean? That in boys, if you have increase in testicular volume before nine years of age, or in girls, if you have pilarchy before eight years, menarche before nine and a half years, or if the gap between the onset of thilarchy and menarche is less than one year, all is, is comes under the term of precocious puberty. Now, what are the causes? In both boys and in girls, there is something called as gonadotropin independent or peripheral precocious puberty where the HPG axis is not activated and the hormones are secreted by the gonads only or gonadotropin dependent Central precocious puberty or true precocious puberty in which the HPG axis has been activated. Now, what are the most common causes in both peripheral and central precocious puberty in girls and boys that we should keep in mind? Where the pituitary and the hypothalamus is involved, it is called as the central precocious puberty, and where the gonads are involved, it is called as peripheral. Now, in central, most commonly, it's idiopathic, which is more common in girls. In boys, most of the times, if the central precocious puberty happens, it is pathological. It can be tumors or CNS insult in the form of meningitis, radiation, surgery, trauma, if hypothalamus and pituitary are involved. If testis is involved, that's peripheral precocious puberty, we have to look for tumor or gonadotropin independent precocious puberty as can be testotoxicosis or it can be an exogenous hormone exposure. In girls, it can be hypothyroidism, ovarian cyst, macunol bright syndrome, or if the adrenals are involved, it can be CAH or a tumor. Now, one thing that we have to keep in mind when we are looking at peripheral, sorry, when we are looking at precocious puberty is incomplete ovarian. What are these? Premature thilarchy. It is mostly seen in girls less than two years of age. You would find palpable glandular tissue in these girls. But when you examine them, they do not have any other signs of puberty. Bone age is normal. Growth rate is normal. Important to rule out lipomastia if the girls are obese and only reassurance is required. Premature adrenarchy, that is appearance of pubic hair, axillary hair, body odor and sometimes mild acne in children of six to eight years of age group. When we examine these kids, they normally have a normal growth rate, no other signs of puberty. If there is no evidence of clitromegaly, penile growth or testicular enlargement, then nothing needs to be done. If we investigate them, we would find that they might have raised DHEAS values, but LHSSH, estrogen, testosterone and bone age would be all within the prepubertal or normal range. Premature menarche, this is actually a misnomer. If a child presents to you with vaginal bleeding, but no other signs of puberty, please look for tra trauma to the area, foreign body, infection, sexual abuse, a vaginal or uterine tumor, and in rare cases, hypothyroidism. Now, why do we need to worry about a child starting puberty early? We all know that starting and completing puberty too early may prevent the child from reaching his or her full final adult height. We might miss out on an underlying pathological cause like hypothyroidism or simple virilizing or non-classic CAH. 
the psychosocial impact of premature sexual development is quite imperative. Now, let's see a case, six year old overweight girl, parents were concerned about increasing breast size. So the child was observed in sitting position, was found, found to have breast canner stage two, no pubic or axillary hair. Investigations were done in which thyroid profile was found to be normal. The hormones were in pre-pubertal range, bone age of seven years and height age of six and a half years. So she was termed as premature thinarchy. She was observed for six months. There was no change in breast size, height velocity of six centimeters per year. Now, what could have been done differently in this case? Another doctor, what he did was that he observed the child in supine position. He found that the child had no breast development, no pubic or axillary hair. He termed her as lipomastia. The child was observed for six months with lifestyle counseling. Now, what was done differently is in this case was that no investigations were ordered. So the mental trauma to the child and the parents was avoided. So it is important that whenever in a girl you're looking for thilarchy, do so in supine position to differentiate between thilarchy and lipomastia. Another case, six year old girl presented with thilarchy. She's quite tall for her age, as we can see. And her height age is of eight year old, weight of seven and a half year old. On examination, she had thilarchy, tanner stage 2 to 3, pubic and axillary hair present. Her bone age was quite advanced, of about 11 years. They had a previous height, which was 6 months back, 122 centimeters, so height velocity of 10 centimeters per year, which is quite advanced. So this is definitely a case of precocious puberty. Now, whether it's central or peripheral, most probably central, what are the points supporting it? That the child has thilarchy, the bone age is quite advanced, and she has a high height velocity more than the prepubertal age group. And why it's a precocious puberty? Because the child is less than eight years of age. Now, if a child presents to you with precocious puberty, a suspected precocious puberty, how do you evaluate the child? Duration is very important because mostly in pathological causes, you would have a rapidly progressive precocious puberty. Family history, mother's menarche and father's growth per age are important to know because if the mother had started with her menarche early, then the girl or the child might also start a little early. Exogenous sources of sex steroids very commonly used in homes and the history should be asked about use of any OCPs by the mother or use of any testosterone or estrogen screen. Any CNS symptoms like headache, visual defects, a history of disorders associated with central precocious puberty. This can be a history of trauma, tumor, radiation, surgery, meningitis, or any history of disorders associated with peripheral precocious puberty like mccune albright syndrome or hypothyroidism or CAS, which if untreated or poorly treated can lead to onset of central precocious puberty. Now, how do we evaluate that? Is this really precocious puberty or not? The child would have a rapid linear growth crossing the percentiles in upward direction. There would be change in body structure, which can be seen by using a tanner chart. We can see for the breast development and for the penile and testicular development. Also, we can measure the testicular volume in boys by using an orchidometer. Boys, voice change, acne, and facial hair can occur. Pubic hair, axillary hair, and body odor, as I had told before, are because of the adrenal androgen effect, and they do not. Uh, indicate an onset of central precocious puberty. They can occur separately also. Vaginal mucosa, if it's pale, there has been an estrogen exposure. What investigations we can do to confirm our diagnosis? LH is a better indicator than FSH of the onset of true precocious puberty. If it is less than 0.1, then pre-pubertal and more than 0.6 is pubertal. Estrogen levels of more than 10 picomol per liter, testosterone of more than 30 nanogram per deciliter are indicative of onset of puberty. Now, it's important that these investigations are done early morning because initially 
the release of hormones in the body is quite arbitrary mostly they are produced in the night so early morning samples are a better indicator but if the values are not very clearly pre pubertal or pubertal then gnrh analog test is the gold standard uterine ultrasound is done to look for ovarian and uterine size endometrial thickness and also to rule out ovarian cyst or tumor now bone age definitely it would be advanced except in hypothyroidism there would you would find signs of isosexual precocious puberty with a delayed bone age thyroid profile is important 17 hydroxy progesterone levels are required to rule out non classic or simple generalizing ph cns imaging to look for hypothalamic hamartoma or tumor in girls if there are any pubertal changes present in less than 6 years of age then mri hypothalamic pituitary region should be done but in boys in all cases of sentry precocious puberty imaging has to be done now the treatment if there is a peripheral cause we treat the underlying cause we stop the exogenous use of any creams or if any hormones are being used hypothyroidism we treat with thyroxine dh with steroids and ovarian cyst observation if it's a central cause then depending upon the age at onset of puberty and the pace of uh, pubertal development estimated adult size we use gnrh analogs what gnrh analogs do is that they desensitize the pituitary which lowers the lh and ssh values and temporarily stops the production of estradiol and testosterone so the key messages are in the boys testicular volume is most important precocious puberty is less common than girls and neuroimaging is necessary if central precocious puberty is present in the girls important to differentiate between thylarchy and lipomastia and central or idiopathic peripheral precocious puberty is more common exclude hypothyroidism in children with precocious puberty and short height observe and timely reference thank you